Oh, welcome, Geometry Honor students. Today we are going to do some really cool math from the top of the hill, Century High School. Actually, you're at home. I'm at Century High School. All right, so just a quick review. A central angle has its vertex at the center of a circle. And the measure of that central angle is exactly the same as the measure of the arc, like this red arc is 83 degrees of the circle and the central angle is 83 degrees. That relationship is important to understand. All right, so now a little demonstration here. All right, looks like kind of the same picture I had before, but all right, there's actually two points at the center of the circle. I'm going to drag the center to the left. All right, so as I'm dragging to the left, B prime is now the vertex of the angle. So you notice what's happening here is that angle A, B prime, C is no longer the same as the angle A, B, C, because angle A, B, C would have to be 90 degrees, the same as the arc. So actually, this angle is smaller than 90 degrees, and as I keep dragging B prime to the left, further away from the center, it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so you notice over here I have a ratio comparing actually uh, angle A, B prime, C to arc CA, which is the same as angle A, B, C. So uh, this angle is smaller than this angle or arc. So notice that this ratio is getting less than 1. Again, they started out at um, exactly the same, so the ratio is 1. But now smaller, 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 smaller. And as B prime approaches the circle, what do you think is going to happen? Make your conjecture. What is that ratio going to be? 0.5. All right, so what that's saying then is that this angle is half of the measure of this arc. All right, so is that always true? Well, let's see, make some different scenarios here. And you can see that this is half of this, right? So the inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc that it cuts off. Very interesting, right? All right, that's how I did that. All right, so let's see. What we'll do next is talk about that theorem. All right, the measure of the inscribed angle is exactly half the measure of the arc that it cuts off, right, or intercepts. Hopefully there will be a football season in the fall. All right, speaking of interceptions. All right, let's see. What do you think is going on here? All right, we have two inscribed angles. One of them is in a darker blue, all right, and the other is a lighter uh, hue, light blue we'll call it. And so which angle is greater, angle B or angle D? All right, so if I've given you enough time to think about it, you would say, they're both the same. Why are they both the same? Because each one is half of the intercepted arc according to that last theorem. All right, so angle B and angle D have exactly the same measures. So even if I drag point D around, all right, angle ADC is not changing. It's 42 degrees, and it stays 42 degrees. All right, that leads us to the next theorem. Since angles, uh, angle B and angle D both are inscribed angles, they're both inscribed in the circle. That means their vertex is on the circle, not at the center. If the vertex was at the center, that would be a central angle. All right, these are both inscribed angles. All right, so their measures, there's a little rounding here, here probably, so let's just fix that a little bit. All right, so their measures are 
each half of the intercepted arc. And so they are equal to each other. All right, so if two angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. Angle B is congruent to angle D. All right, this is a true story. All right, Mr. Larson's first PG movie came about because his uh, brother, who was 10 at the time and I was 7, uh, yep, I just turned 50 in March. I am pretty old, right? So anyways, we went to the movie theater after my brother begged and begged and begged, and finally my parents said, okay, you can go to that PG movie, but you're walking. So by the time we got there, I think we got the last tickets. All right, I don't know if I wanted to sit where uh, seat A is anyway. It looks like kind of a scary place to sit. So uh, the only seats we found were way up to the front. So this was the back of the movie theater. We walked way up to the front. Oh, we better animate that. All right, once the movie started, there were lots of animated things flying around. All right, and then we got up to the front, and we were in the front row and went over, way over by the wall. Well, the viewing angle of the movie screen, if this is the movie screen, is the same for point B as for point A, because both of those are on the same circle. Um, however, we did have to look straight up, but I was seven years old, so that didn't really bother me. All right, that was a true story. Real math we're talking about here. <laughs> All right, so if you want to pause to do these problems, you can pause your uh, video at any time so you don't see the solutions right away. All right, what are the measure of the angles here? Let's see. All right, well, answers. 88 degrees for angle AEC. It's a central angle. It is exactly the same as the measure of the arc. But angle ABC is an inscribed angle. It is half of that. Half of 88 is 44. You got it. All right, so now take a look at this one. We have a right triangle inscribed in a circle. And we know that it's 90 degrees already. So it intercepts an arc which must be twice as big. So 90 times 2 is 180. Ah, so that means that this is a diameter, right? So segment AB is a diameter. This is 180 degrees. So a right triangle inscribed in a circle ends up having a hypotenuse that is a diameter. Let's move point C around a little bit. I notice these don't change. Angle C is still a right angle and arc AB is still 180 degrees. Now if I did not know where the center of the circle was, watch this, all right, over here it's going to appear a circle, all right, without the center marked. But I've inscribed a blue right triangle. All right, so make a right angle here. You'll end up with a right triangle. This will be a diameter. Do the same over here with this purple triangle. Make a right angle. Ah, that's a diameter. Ah, so the center must be where those two intersect, all right, where those two diameters intersect. That's how you can find the center of a circle. All right, so you're going to try this problem. So pause and uh, find all of the unknown measures. All right, go ahead and pause. All right, welcome back. All right, so I'm going to explain these as quick as I can here. Hopefully you got them all right. So uh, the 63 degree angle is inscribed, so uh, the arc that it intercepts is twice as big. That's how I got 126. All right. T, since Q is the center, we know that uh, DB, uh, segment DB is uh, the diameter. So we got a semicircle right here. All right. So that T has to be 90 degrees. Same reasoning. U has to be 90 degrees. Uh, v, all right. V, uh, 64 degrees because we have a 180 degree arc here, a semicircle, 180 minus 116, 
is 64. All right, so then same here. As this is a semicircle, uh, leaving 54 for W. All right, then uh, X is an inscribed angle. That has to be half of W, so 27. Uh, then also you could say the three angles inside the triangle should add up to 180, and we already know uh, 90 and 63. Uh, 90 minus 63 would leave 27, so there's two ways to get that. All right, um, similar on the triangle on the bottom here. Uh, you could take half of 116 to get Y, and you could take half of V to get Z, or Y and Z should add up to 90, because they're the two acute angles of a right triangle. All right. Lastly, if you inscribe, or if a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle, right? Uh, so this is not always the case. You can't just say, any four points can be uh, inscribed in a circle. A circle might not go through all four points. But uh, if they are, all right, if they do happen to be uh, inscribed, meaning that the uh, all four points are on the circle, right, then you'll get this quadru quadrilateral and you notice that the opposite angles are supplementary, all right, 180, 180. All right, if I move point D a little bit, all right, <clears throat> so we know that this angle doesn't change because A and C aren't going anywhere, so this arc ABC, all right, is going to be twice as big as this uh, uh, angle D, all right, so um, 102 and 78, that adds up to 180, and these two are changing, angle A and angle C, but they still add up to 180, all right? And then all four angles add up to 360. Okay, so go ahead and try this problem here. So uh, see if you can make two equations and solve the two equations and turn on the video again when you want to see the solution. All right, so here's the solution. There's my two equations. I knew from that last theorem that the opposite angles had to be supplementary. I wanted to get uh, uh, the terms with x to be opposites, so I multiplied the top equation by negative two and the bottom equation by positive three. Then I can uh, add the left sides and the right sides of the equations together and get y is four and then I can get x is eight after I substitute four uh, back into one of the equations above. All right, this is going to be uh, your assignment. You can write that down, all right, or you can find that on Google Classroom as well. And go Panthers. Here's some former Panthers. My three kids all graduated from Century High School. This was last year in uh, California, or my son goes to school and is a statistics major. And uh, his two sisters got to go to California with their dad for spring break. Wasn't that special? All right, that's all from Top of the Hill. Have yourself a great day. you got two days to get this assignment done.